Hello, today I will be taking you through the process that I personally go through when creating something on the CNC router here at my school. I am the resident expert of the CNC router and I'm just going to take you through the process that I personally go through. Let's get into it. Okay, so before I just like throw y'all in and make y'all pay attention uh, to what I'm doing and kind of learn it as I go, I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown of what will be happening in moments to come. So we're going to start by finding something that we actually need to cut out, something that we either need or want, I should say, need or want to cut out. Uh, it's going to be more complicated than just a square or something you can cut on, say, a table saw or a chop saw. It's going to be a unique, I suppose, shape. Uh, so after we find what we want to cut out, we are going to uh, uptake to our software. I personally use Fusion 360, it's sketch feature, which would make a 2D drawing, uh, which I can then import into Aspire, which uh, takes the 2D drawing and can convert it into vectors, which a CNC machine reads and follows uh, based on what they do, what it's, upload, what it's told to do. Okay, so we're gonna get started with the uh, design process now. I already have something that I want to cut out and that I'm going to cut out, so we're gonna start the design. I'll see you there. All right, so now that we have created our design and uh, have the creation on a USB, we are going to take it over to our maker space, our workshop, and we are going to plug it into this computer, which we are using uh, Aspire. Aspire to change the DFX file into an MMG file, which a CNC machine can read. So uh, let me walk you through that. All right, so now moving to the computer. First of all, sorry about the uh, kind of janky setup or bad quality video. Uh, I'm dealing on dealing with a bit of older hardware and I'm not quite sure personally about its screen recording functions. Despite that, we're going to load into Aspire and get started. So, well, we're already in Aspire. We're gonna start with uh, creating a new file. And here we are going to input the width, the height, and the thickness, and we are going to double check that the origin point is set in the center. So our width is nine inches, our height is 36, and our thickness is 0 0.79. This is all important because we want to uh, let the machine know what kind of wood it's working with and where it's working. This also gives us our plane in case we're creating anything or uh, adjusting the size of anything. So we're just gonna okay to confirm it. Now we have our board here and to the left, over here, we have all of these different tools we can use. These are useful if you want to create very simple objects. You can uh, just come in here, you can skip the whole Fusion process, but I do have to mention that Fusion or separate CADs are a lot easier to design on and it is much, much easier than just uh, trying to solely uh, use Aspire. Uh, anyways, we're going to come over here and hit File. We're going to Import import vectors and uh, we have already plugged in our USB in the store uh, store and go uh, we named the demon slayer because uh, that is the anime that I've based these swords off of uh, anyways we're just going to open this and as you can see right now it's here it's kind of tiny uh, we're just going to grab it oh, grab it and use this tool here to pretty much make it giant. Now, right now it's not all grouped together uh, and it's kind of making it explode. I can't really get an accurate size out of it. So what we're gonna do is come over here to uh, the join open vectors. We're going to press it. Ours is set very, very small, but you can adjust this based on uh, what you want to adjust. Just note that if it is too big, then it is going to start making your creations or the designs look very, very uh, improper or not how they're supposed to. We're just gonna hit join and uh, we can test if this worked by just trying to grab one wall and if it grabs the whole thing, then perfect, it worked. Now, if we come over to this sizing, it is a lot more controlled. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's, uh, it's a lot more controlled and uh, just proper. Right, so. Uh, now that we have this, uh, sorry, that was just a kind of auto resizing thing I'm doing to uh, I, I don't help myself really not help y'all. Pretty much get it adjusted to the size you need. Uh, we just did, and now 
we are going to come over here and hit tool paths. Uh, I like to pin this if you press this little pin, literally, little pin right here. It keeps this here so if you move away it doesn't disappear. Now there are a bunch more to uh, tools that just appeared on the right side of the screen. And they all have different purposes and different meanings, but for the sake of this video, for the sake of what we are doing, we are just going to use a profile toolpath. If we click on this, we can adjust the cut depth. Uh, right now, it is adjusted to our, where we need to. You generally want to do your like the width of your board and then about 0.5 or 0.6 more. So ours is 0 0.796, just barely more, just to ensure that it'll cut all the way through. It's, it's sole purpose. So right after this, we choose our bit. Uh, we have multiple here to choose from, but uh, we're going to go with the eighth inch in mill. Uh, I will demonstrate this a bit shortly. Uh, it is meant for clearing out rough shapes, but it's small enough to do details, and that's kind of what we want exactly for this uh, uh, design. Right. So now we choose uh, where we want it to cut. So we can have it cut directly on the vectors. These are vectors now. We can have it cut directly on them. We can have it cut on the inside of them or on the outside of them. For really accurate cuts, if you're trying to make, say, a hexagon, but you need it to be exactly one foot on each side, you're going to want to cut on the outside, and the machine will make sure that it's one foot no matter where it is. Uh, the inside, it's going to make it how you need it in every way. It just depends on if you're having uh, pieces really close to each other. So for us, we're going to do on, considering we have kind of uh, more difficult spots like here that we don't necessarily want it to be on the outside or it's not, it's just not going to look right, right? All right, so it's set to on ramp plunge moves. We're just, we're not going to mess with this. We don't need this for anything that we are doing currently. Tabs, tabs are really useful because uh, as you can see, I've already placed some, but tabs are really useful because when it is cutting through, you want the tabs to hold your wood in place so that when it gets done cutting out, it's not just gonna fly. This is especially useful if you're cutting something small and uh, light because on at least m most machines, uh, they have a vacuum. Uh, and even if they don't, I mean, you have a, bl a bit spinning at thousands of RPMs. You don't really want any loose chunks flying all over the room, right? So we're just gonna add a few along the blade. Uh, keep in mind the spots you add them, you don't wanna add them to any thin spots because you wouldn't want it to snap. You wouldn't want your blade itself to snap. These are meant to be thin and easily removable, but you don't wanna break your artifact as we call it here uh, while trying to remove something so simple. So now that we have a few set, we're just gonna close this. And uh, we can rename this or whatever we want. I'm going to keep it as profile one because I'm not cutting out anything else or hollowing or any anything like that. So now we're just going to calculate. It's going to give us a warning because we set it for 0.6 more than our material depth. Just press OK. Uh, as long as you have something that isn't just bare metal that it'll cut through when it cuts all the way through, it should be perfectly fine. So we're going to close out of this now that we've calculated. As you can see, now on uh, tool path list, we have profile one. Uh, this is this is what we just created. Uh, now to see what it's going to look like, we can preview toolpaths. Now we have a whole different menu. We can, if we turn it, we can uh, all the blue lines represent how many passes it's going to do, what kind of time it's going to take. Uh, we can preview this. This isn't an accelerated rate, but preview it. It's going to cut out pretty much exactly how we made it. These are the tabs I was talking about. As you can see, they're not uh, the same depth, but they are thinner and just easily removable. All right, now that we know that this is okay, we're just gonna close this. We're gonna actually come back to our basic drawing. Uh, to check the time, we can actually hit the button right next to this. This is how long it's gonna take. It's gonna take us 31 minutes to cut this. I promise you, not everything you've got on the CNC will take you this long. This is solely because of the uh, size of our bit size of our actual creation itself and the complexity of our creation, it's not something it can just do very fast. And honestly, 31 minutes isn't that bad. Just do something else while you're doing that. It really gets stuff done because as long as you can watch a machine pass once, then it'll, it'll make it all the way through without any complications. 
All right, so close. We have checked everything, done everything, have our toolpaths created. We are simply going to, right here, click on Save Toolpaths. Uh, make sure it is set as an MMG. All right, Save Toolpaths. We are going to save it uh, to our store and go, our USB, right here. If, if you can see my hand, right here. We are going to save it there. We are going to name it. My name is Haskell, so I'm gonna name it H dash. This will be like my sixth creation, so I'm gonna name it H dash six. That way, it is super easily uh, easy to find on the machine itself. And then we're just gonna save it. All right. This is just a tip in general. If you ever have a USB or anything plugged in to a USB slot, make sure to come down here and eject it before you take it out because you don't want to damage the hardware. All right, I'll see you at the machine. All right, so now we're at our machine. If you need a piece of wood set to what you uh, had made it, so, sorry about this, this wood's already been cut on. I had to, you know, do a test, make sure I wasn't gonna embarrass myself while, uh, while doing this. Anyways, uh, if your wood is already cut, then perfect, you just need to set it up. Uh, very important, you need to mark the center point. This is why we set the origin to the center. Anyways, mark the center point, get it all clamped down nice and proper. This is important to make sure that your coolant system is plugged in because you do not, do not want this to overheat. All right, so now we're gonna come to this uh, control panel. We're gonna turn the machine on itself. You can hear a lot of stuff happen. Uh, vacuum, as I mentioned earlier. And, uh, you can see we're going to all access home it. And this is going to bring the machine to its home of every axis to kind of reset it. And just turn this off. Uh, this is going to take some time, so I'll come back to you when it's done. All right, so now everything has been homed. Now, before we move or turn on anything, this is when you're going to want to open the blade guard. Uh, we already have our set. This is the 1 8 uh, in mill bit that we will be using. Uh, of course, you're gonna wanna change this if you're using something different. All right, closing it up. Now we are just going to use the control panel here, X, Y, Z here, and we are going to use it to go and mark our center. I'm gonna do that and I'll be back with you after it's done. All right, so once we have the bit actually lined up with our mark that we made, we are going to hit uh, X, Y, zero right here. This resets the uh, home or origin coordinate coordinates. Uh, now we are just going to lift our actual bit itself and get the Z sensor or depth sensor right here. You're going to place, place it right by the blade. And we, are, I personally like to lower this to make the process a little quicker. But once it's down here, you want to press on off on off and home at the same time and it'll slowly lower the blade and the second it touches the sensor it'll shoot up and that's how it detects where our board is and how thick it is right so now we're just going to we install we just keep ours on top of the machine anyways now we are going to after we have inserted the usb everything's origin everything's homed we are going to hit run pause delete right here U disk file, uh, when it says that, it's talking about any USB that is uh, currently inserted. And now we are going to look through our U disk files using uh, X and Y. Y is for pages, X is for individual. X and Y to scroll through until we find what we're looking for. We are looking for H 6. There it is, H 6. Now we're just going to press OK. This is uh, our work speed, our pretty much uh, how fast it will be working, how fast it's gonna be doing everything. Most of the time, you should have this set to your default, uh, and depending on the material and on special occasions, you're gonna wanna change this, but most of the other time, it'll be okay. We're just gonna hit okay, and then it will start a countdown, and as you can see, the blade is now spinning. I'm just gonna close the door, and uh, I'll come back to you all when it's done, I guess. Maybe we will have a time lapse. we'll see.
right, so it just got done cutting, and uh, this is right after it's done, in fact. I haven't uh, taken it out yet. This is our uh, end product. Now I'm just going to take it out, and I generally uh, sand them, clean them up, and they end up looking uh, real nice. You can make props. You can make anything out of this. So I just uh, suggest you all have fun and try it out if you, if you can try it out.